Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Great morning, everyone. And gracious morning for every one of us. I pray that the Lord will impart every life, even this morning, in Jesus' name. And what you need, what we all need, to climb to the top of the mountain and stay there and make a success of the calling the Lord has given us. The Lord will impart it into your life today in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, we thank you this morning. And we thank you for your word, the unchanging word, the unalterable word, the mighty powerful word. We're asking, O oh Lord, today that this word will become a solid support under every minister, every professional, every one, man, woman, in Jesus' name. And I pray that the power we derive from the world will see us through all the storms of life. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can be seated. Today we are coming to chapter 3 of 2 Timothy. Look at verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And then let's look at verse 16. It says in verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, may be matured, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. As we came from chapter 1, chapter 1 talked about the appointed minister. Chapter 2, we look at the approved minister. And chapter 3 now, we're looking at the anointed minister. And the anointed minister does not go into ministry empty-handed. He goes with the message. And it is with the authorized message. And when the anointed minister carries the authorized message and the God of heaven supports him, it will succeed. And so the first thing you need to look at is what message do I have? What message do I preach? What message do I carry? And what message do I lay by? It must be the authorized message. And that is what will make your anointing to be what it ought to be. And the anointing of the Lord will not fail in your life in Jesus' name. The anointed minister with the authorized message. There are three things we're looking at as we look at the chapter. Number one, proper comprehension of latter-day situations. You will see in verse 1, it talks about perilous times, the last days. And we need to understand, we need to comprehend, and we need to be able to analyze the last days and see what will be happening and then what stand do you take from that number two is the personal commitment to loyal devoted service service for it to be effective must be loyal to the lord and loyal to the word and then two it must be a devoted service Unto the Lord. Number three, the profitable concentration 
on life distilling scripture is the word of God the scripture that actually makes our life distilled distinct and distinguished and we have concentration on that scripture profitable concentration on life distilling scripture let's come to number one number one is the proper comprehension of the latter day situations from that plural word situations you will know that we have more than one situation and i will say this way there are two streams of prophecy for the last days many people look only at one stream of the prophecy of the last days and because of that they have a wrong notion a wrong idea as to what am i what am i to do how am i to do it in these last days there are two streams of prophecies for the last days three things we're looking at number one alarming predictions on the latter days that's the first stream number two another prophecy apart from number one the alarming prediction there is the another prophecy on the last days now if there is one stream and there's another stream then i need to have a choice that leads me to point number three affirmed preference that's my choice of liberated disciples let's look at number one number one the alarming prediction on the latter days we're looking at second timothy chapter 3 verse 1 it says in verse 1 this know also if you are ignorant of what might happen then that thing will take you by surprise and you'll say what do i do now and you might have a sinking feeling and you might have a discouraged mind because you are ignorant but this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come in verse 2 it tells us it says for men shall be lovers of their own selves how do you reach them if you don't know their preferences if you don't know they'll be lovers of their own selves they'll be thinking of themselves alone and yet those are the people you are going to you are going to minister to it says they'll be covetous and it says they'll be boosters they'll be proud they'll be blasphemers they'll be disobedient to parents unthankful unholy look at verse 3 it says in verse 3 without natural affection those are the people were reaching in these last days and it says there will be truth breakers there will be false accusers incontinent fears despisers of those that are good and then it says in verse 4 in verse 4 it tells us there will be traitors they will be heady they will be high-minded they will be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of god and yet you have to reach every creature and you have to preach to them. And this is the situation in the last days. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. The condition and the situation in the last days. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, latter times, these are the times we're living in, it says, Some shall depart from the faith. And these are the people we're supposed to reach. Then it says, they shall uh, they, they depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Then in verse 2, it says, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. That's one stream of prophecy now there's another stream of prophecy for the last days we need to take note of that we're coming to number two here another prophecy on 
the last days. We're looking at Acts chapter 2. We're reading from verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Look at verse 17. It says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. Understand? There's a second stream. There's another stream of prediction, of prophecy for the last days. The first stream we read, everything looked negative. Everything looks like, how are we going to live in the world? How are we going to minister in the world? If this is the only stream of prophecy we have for the last days. But thank God, that's not the only stream of prophecy for the last days. Verse 17, it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh last days and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy last days and your young men shall see visions in these last days and your old men shall dream dreams and then he tells us in verse 18 it says and on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days, last days, of my spirit. And they shall prophesy in the last days. And then we're told in verse 21, it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, it shall come to pass, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, you look at this stream and it's negative. And you look at this stream and it's positive. And now you have to make a choice. And this is the choice that actually makes you either to sink or to swim. It is this choice that you make whether the negative stream of prophecy or the positive stream of prophecy your choice will either discourage you or encourage you it is the extreme that will either make you a victim or a victim Look at chapter 3. In chapter 3, it tells us, Acts chapter 3, verse 19, and it says, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Last days, look at verse 20. In verse 20, it tells us there, And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. And in verse 21, it says, Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution. That's what there means, restoration. The restoration of all things, last days, last days. It's the last days that all the good things God had promised, there'll be a restoration. Meanwhile, in the dark ages, all those things have been lost. In the dark ages, the message of salvation, the message of holiness, the message of the power of the Holy Ghost, and the message of the finality and the authority of the scripture, all that was lost, but it's in the last days that there will be a restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. All the promises of God since the world began in the last days, they be restored. In the last days, they be fulfilled. In the last days, great things will happen now. In the last days, one stream of prophecy. This know also in the latter times, there will be perilous times. In the last days, the Lord will pour out his spirit now. You make your choice. Number three here. Number three is affirmed preference. 
of liberated disciples. He puts uh, the choice before us. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, I'm reading there from verse 19. Uh, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you two streams, life and death. And then it says in that same verse, blessing and cursing. You see then, there are two streams. Therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose the stream of prophecy that will bring life to you in these last days. Choose life that both thou and thy seed both thou and thy members, both thou and, the ch and your children in the family, that both thou and your companions may live. Have you noticed that these two streams are always before us? And we always have to make a choice. Did you listen to that song of, can of uh, the can choir this morning, Peace Be Still? On the one hand, there was the storm. On the other hand, the Savior was there. And you have to choose which one to look at. Do I look at the storm? Then I cry. I perish. Carest thou not? Or do I look at the Savior who says, let us pass on to the other side? The storm has a message, a negative message. But the Savior has a message, a positive message, and your choice is the one that will pull you over. I will go over. I said I will go over. Uh, do you see, do you see Joseph? And Joseph had two streams before him. Number one stream is the temptress, the tempter. And the tempter said, come, do this with me. If you look at that, that's what you'll do. But then the tempter is there. That's one stream. The throne is there. And that man kept his eyes on the throne. It is what you look at. It is what you concentrate on that will make you either a victim or a victim. Temptation there. You have your choice. But the throne is there. And the man said, I am destined for the throne. And people like me, destined for the throne, we don't do things like that. Have you heard about Moses? Moses had the visible power of Pharaoh before him. And Pharaoh said, who is that God? If you come over here again, you'll not live to tell the story of what will happen to you. But then Moses also had the invisible. And he lived his life as seeing the invisible. The visible there, the invisible there, two streams. And you make your choice, which one are you looking at? If you're looking at the visible, if you're looking at the things that are near, you're going to sink and you're going to have problem. People concentrate this, no, also in the latter times, pray, lost times shall come. Men shall be lovers of themselves. They'll be covetous, they'll be boosters, and they will not have the love of God. They'll love pleasure more than the praise of God. Have you heard about Enoch? Enoch lived at a time when the whole earth was corrupt. And if he wanted to, he could look at the stream of corruption and say, what can we do? Where can we go? How can we make it in life? Look at the corruption. It says every imagination of the thought and the heart of every man was evil continually. But then he had a choice. The creator was there. And the creator could make a new creature out of him. And then he said, look at the stream of corruption and look at another stream of the creator. And he chose to walk walk with God by faith. Today, those two streams are before us. If you look at things around, 
This is what God said in the last days. There shall be this, there shall be that. And men shall be this, and men can be that. If you are not careful, they stuff, they snuff out your life. If you are not careful, they bury you before you die because this is a corrupt age, it's a cruel age. That's one stream. If that is what you are looking at, you are gone. But if you say there's another stream, the stream of the Spirit of God being poured upon the earth and the stream of going into all the world and preaching the gospel to every creature and I am going to get on into that stream. I'm going to kind of get connected and get united with the positive. The negative will die out of your life. You see, it is what we concentrate on. Uh, you know, the, you say, you know, I'm following the scripture. I say, which scripture are you following? You see, you know, in the last days, there will be this and be that. And because of that, how come? I'm just looking for cover. I want to look for a way where I will be secured. Where well, you're looking at the wrong thing. Look at the Savior who is preparing a militant church. Look at the Savior who is preparing a glorious church. And when he comes, Arms, church, the church triumphant and the church militant will be alive and thank God I'll be part of that church. I said I'll be part of that church. Now somebody is hiding somewhere and is sneaking out of ministry. I cannot, I will not because you know these last days things are bad now. There is Satan, the God of this world. Then there is the Lord, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he's our shepherd. Now, look at David there. A lion came. That's the negative. There are lions in the forest. There are lions in the bush. A bear came. There are bears in the forest. And then there is the great shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. And then he anoints my head and my cup runneth over. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou anointest my head. That's written by the man that was in the forest where there are lions, where there are, where there are bears. He said, Thou anointest my head, and my cup runneth over. Even in that wilderness, and it says, Surely, surely, I will live, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Which stream are you looking at? And so, when the bear came, and when the lion came, I knew this will happen. But that's the negative. I'm not looking at the bear at the lion. I'm looking at the great one that has given me the power. He held that lion and tore the lion into pieces. He had the victory. You have the victory. I said you have the victory. Make the right choice. Of the streams of prophecies in the last days, you'll be on top every time. Where are you? on top at the peak and the negative prophecies of the last days will not bring you down look at daniel chapter 11 daniel 11 we're looking at verse 32 in daniel 11 looking at verse 32 daniel 11 reading from verse 32 it says in daniel chapter 11 verse 32 it says in the first part the negative it says and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall corrupt but shall be corrupted by flattery that the first tree there will be those who will be corrupted there will be those who will go into the river of corruption it's just the one stream of the prophecies of the last days and now the second stream of the prophecy running at the same time but going the same direction in different directions and having different sources here is the second part but the people 
that do know their God shall be strong. At the same time, when other people are corrupted, when other people are wicked, and when other people go under, at that same time, to see, look at the second part of the stream, the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Are you of that number? Yes. I said, are you of that number? Yes. What you are looking at will determine which stream you follow and which company you belong to. I choose to follow the positive. I choose to follow the invisible one. I choose to follow the positive, practical, powerful prophecy of the last days. And even in these last days, you will do exploits. Let's come now to point number two. Point number two, we're talking about personal Commitment to loyal, devoted service. We're coming to 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. But that was fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, love, suffering, charity, that's love and patience. Look at Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle, it was the same one that gave us what will be happening in the last days. And yet, he said, you know, Timothy, there are two streams. I told you one stream now, but my life is based not on the gloomy things that take place in the world, my life is based on the grace of God that's also available at the same time those gloomy things are happening. And thou, Timothy, you have fully known my doctrine. You have known my manner of life. I didn't go to stay in the corner looking for refuge. I didn't go to stay in the corner. The world is bad, the world is corrupt, and many bad things are happening. There is this happening there in the northeast, and that one is happening in the northwest, and that one is happening in the south south, and that one is happening in uh, you know other parts of the world. And because of that, all I need now is to look for shelter. He said, No, there's another stream, another stream of the promise of God. I will never leave you, I will never forsake you and then I've sent you forth and no man shall hurt you when you look at that side then you're able to identify with Paul the Apostle you know my manner of life and you know my purpose and you know my faith my faith is not in Satan my faith is not in bad people. My faith is not in injurious people. My faith is the God of heaven. And in the mighty one that I will follow and he will hold my hand. You know my faith and you know my long suffering. Because I know that whatever danger, whatever difficulty, all that is temporary. What we look not at things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen, the persecution and the suffering and the hunger and the thirst and whatever it is, the things that are seen are temporal. They're just for now. But the things that are not seen, the invisible, they are the things that are forever and ever. You know, we have two sets of eyes. We have the natural eyes with which we we'll see what is happening in the last days that the perilous time and men will be like this, they'll be like that. With our natural eyes, we can see them. And what we we'll see with the natural eyes might slow us now, might stop us from doing what we need to do. But then there is the inner eye, the eye of your spirit, that the Lord will open your inner eyes and then you will see the great things and the fullness and the plenitude and the great uh, prophecies and the great power of the Lord. There are some people that only use their natural eyes. 
and therefore all the sea is the temporal all the sea is the danger all the sea is what they read in the in the books or they read in the newspapers what they see on television what they hear over the radio all they see is the natural and their plans and their purposes and their ministry and their work all depends on what they see with their natural eyes they never use their inner eye that will give them the revelation of God still being at work even at such a time like this the Lord is saying you should open those inner eyes open my eyes O Lord that I might see wondrous things out of your word that the Lord will open the eyes of your mind that you will see the great things he has provided for us at this time and so it says my long suffering and charity and patience look at verse 11 in verse 11 it says and the uh, persecutions and afflictions which came upon me at Antioch at Iconium and at Lystra what persecutions I endured but out of them all the Lord delivered me give me a good amen there amen. What you are looking at will determine your deliverance, your dominion, your power, your authority. Remember all the time, those two streams are always there. Three things here. Number one, uh, components of the loyal, devoted service. Components of loyal, devoted service. Number two, courage under the leaders discipline studies number three continuation in life's defining standard defining standard what that means is there is something that defines your life what you think about all the time defines your life what you look at all the time defines your life what you meditate on all the time defines your life your personality is defined by what you think of every time and your speech and your strength is determined and defined by what you are thinking of every time continuation in lives defining standard let's come to number one the components of loyal devoted service that's exactly what we read there if a paul the apostle said thou has fully known that was fully known that means timothy was observing the life of paul you cannot fully know something if you don't observe you cannot fully know something if you don't study it. And um, Timothy took Paul as a curriculum to study, as material to study. He observed, he learned, he heard, he followed, and then what he saw, Paul the Apostle said, I know you've been studying my life. I know you have been looking at my life and you fully know my doctrine is studied. That's why he knew that. My manner of life is studied. That's how he knew my purpose. That's how he knew that. He said, I I'm studying this man. Anything that will contradict the purpose of his calling, he will always say no. No matter how inviting and no matter how exciting, this man is a man of purpose. He is a purpose dreaming man. He studied him and he knew anything exciting, anything very nice, anything uplifted, anything that will put him on the map, anything that will make him popular. If it's against the purpose of his calling, I know this man Paul will not do anything like that and then you know my faith the faith that says across any river 
I'll climb any mountain. I will go anywhere. Even if the places are fields with lions, like Daniel went to the lion's den, he had developed his faith to know that lions will not stand between him and ministry. He was not fearing, he was not fidgeting, and he was not timid. He knew that because the Lord was still on the throne, and the Lord had told him at the beginning, delivering thee from all the people that I will send you to. He never forgot that. Delivering you from all the people I will send you to because of that faith. And then long suffering. He said, you know, all these people that I put in the prison, they suffered, they kept their faith when I was persecuting them. If it comes to my turn now to get into the prison, I will endure those women, those boys, those girls, I threw them in jail and they endured and they never denied the Lord. I showed them paper. I showed them authority and I told them I have a warrant to arrest you because you are a Christian and gently and courageously with their backbone not standing, they went to the prison and they said, now when I go to the prison, I remember those people how they stood because of that I stand. And the people I gave my voice to, if they were to stone them, and they just stood there, patient and meek and loving, and they said, Lord, count not this, charge against them and they looked up and they said I see the heavens open and I see the son of man standing at the right hand of God I saw that man when he went to glory and he said Lord Jesus receive my spirit and what I saw in them when I was an unbeliever when I was persecuting them now I have that's why he had long suffering and he had charity and patience those are the components of the devoted service of Paul the Apostle. And then in verse 11, verse 11 tells us persecutions, afflictions which came upon me at Antioch. Ah, at Antioch, I have this persecution now. I had planned I will go to another place, Iconium. If I see this at Antioch, if I repackage my load, my baggage, and I now go to Iconium, what will happen? I must learn from experience. And then if I planned before, I will go to I will go to Lystra. But look at what happened to me at Antioch. And I don't want to die now because I'm still too young to die. If I die, who will carry on the gospel is looking at one stream of the prophecy. But then Paul the Apostle said, it came in Lystra and I got through and I went through and I endured. And now next time I am going to Iconium. I thought if what happened in Lystra will happen in Iconium, don't worry about that. I'm looking at the other stream until I finish. All that God has appointed me for to do, nothing will happen that will stop me. Nothing will happen that will stop you. Amen. I said nothing will happen that will stop you. Amen. You've been, in, uh, you've been in, um, in Antioch and there were some, you know, some problems. You visited, you went to do evangelism and you went to, you know, develop and edify the church there and something happens, finish there. Don't run out, don't run away, don't, uh, don't sneak out. Finish what you are doing there and then you go to the next place, Iconium, and you go to the next place, Lystra. What persecutions I endured? What persecution I endured? But out of them all. How many of them? Oh. Out of them all. I said how many of them? Oh. Don't you know the Lord will never fail you? The Lord will never leave you. And whatever he has given you to do, you will do. You might see some things on the way while you are going. That's not your destination. Look away. Know when to use your natural eyes. Know when to use your spiritual inner eyes of your soul, of your mind. 
And if what your natural eyes are showing you, if they are not helping you to fulfill the ministry, switch on and switch up the physical, natural eyes and switch on your spiritual eyes, you will see heaven. Amen. You will see glory. Amen. You will see power. Amen. You will see companionship of the Lord. And you'll never fail in Jesus' name. Amen. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. Say it for yourself. Say it with confidence. And let me show you one verse of scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, we're looking at verse 10. Look at, I want you to look at the word deliver. I want you to look at that word deliver in the past. Look at that word deliver in the present. Look at that word deliver in the future. All through your life. The Lord who delivered you in the past will deliver you in the present day. Amen. Look at this. Who delivered us, pastors, from so great a death and doth deliver. He's not tired. He's done it before. He'll do it again. And then in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Past, present, future, you are delivered in Jesus' name. I come to number two here. Number two, courage under the leader's discipline studies. Courage under the leader's discipline studies. You know, Timothy had a great privilege of seeing Paul, his father, in the Lord. And he saw if God could do that for him, God will do that for me. And here we find his courage. As Paul the Apostle reminded him, and you know Paul the Apostle, he met with the Sanhedrin, was courageous. He met with the Pharisees and Sadducees, he knew the trade, he knew the talk. He knew the boasting. He knew the authority they had. He's been with them before. He said, I come to you now as a new man. I'm not a Pharisee like I used to be. And I, now I have I had the experience of the Pharisees in the past, but I have something greater than what I had in the, at that time. And Timothy was observing him. And then he went to the Gentiles, the people that shouted, this is a God. And then when Paul the Apostle and Barnabas stopped them, they turned around and they stood that man. And Timothy said, this man, whether we're the Gentiles or the Jews, whether we the religious or the traditionalists, he had courage. And then just looking at him now, if you look at timid people, fearful people, shaking people, trembling people, You'll be like them. You will be like the people you look at every time. The people who always run away when there is any challenge. If, that's, if those are the people you are looking at, that's what you'll become. If you look at a hero, if you look at a champion, if you look at a giant, oh, it's not saying we're so giants in the land and we are like grasshoppers. If you're looking at giants every time, as you are looking at all their traits, all their portraits, and all their peculiarities will be flowing into you and you will have that courage in Jesus name look at this in verse 12 yeah, it says and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution is that so all all that will live godly righteous holy in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution if I go to hide, this is prophecy. And this will be fulfilled. If I stand, I'll suffer. If I cringe, I'll suffer. If I fall, I'll suffer. If I stop, I'll suffer. If I go on, I'll suffer. Now, if I fall, no reward. If I go back, no reward. 
If I turn back, no reward. If I'm fretful and worried, no reward. If I'm fearful, no reward. If I stand, there's reward. And whether I stand or fall, there's going to be persecution. Whether I move forward or run back, there's going to be persecution. And so, the best for me is to stand. And the best for you is to stand. You will stand. I'm looking at somebody there and I see strength and power coming into your life. I see anointing coming upon your life in Jesus' name. They stood, you will stand. And they were able to overcome, you will overcome. As Goliath never intimidated David no Goliath of this day will intimidate your life in Jesus name yea and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution and then in verse 13 it says evil men and seducers shall walk worse and worse deceiving and being deceived Apostle Paul, what are you saying? What have the Apostle Paul was saying is this, that evil men, the messengers of the devil, the servants of Satan, if there is no conversion, they will not be static. They will not stay at one point. They will be going worse and worse and worse, serving their master, the devil. Paul said, Timothy, do you understand? He said, yes, I understand. What do you learn from that, Timothy? If the servants of Satan are not static, I learn that me, servant of the Savior of Christ, I must not stand static. If the servants of Satan, if they are always in their own language, improving on their method to do evil, expanding their strategy to do evil. If the servants of Satan, if they're going at a greater speed today in doing evil, going worse and worse, Timothy, what do you learn? I learn that myself, as a servant of the Lord, who will be rewarded on the final day, I will not stay static. If they're going worse and worse, I will be going better and better. Amen. Higher and higher. Amen. Greater and greater. Amen. If they are expanding their territory by evil, I also will be expanding the territory of reaching out in Jesus' name. Amen. And if they are developing new strategies to deal evil and they are going worse and worse, then I, as a servant of God, you, as a servant of God, if those people are getting new methods and they are doing evil, then you will get new strategy. And you'll get new method in doing the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. Now, these are the last days and evil people growing worse and worse. How are they doing it? They're going worse and worse because now they go beyond using their natural strength, using their natural ability. They see technology, they use telephone, they use the media, and they use all these connections, they use the Zoom, and they use all these things to expand the evil they are doing. If those messengers of Satan, if they are using the present day technology and they are expanding, how about me? How about you? Then you will use those same things. They are available. They are not only available for messengers of, you know, who do evil. They are available for the people that are doing good. You will use them. I said you will use them. You know, the church has been asleep when radio began some years ago and people they didn't understand how voice of a coming out of the radio and so they said the church at that time said no 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 
we cannot use radio. There is uh, something there that is magical. There is something there that is demonic and, you know, voice coming out of a jersey gadget and we cannot say, say no 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 and then when they just said no 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 the people of the world so are going from wars to wars they began to use the radio then the church woke up and said see the people who are doing the evil then you see the radio and then television came and when television came and somebody somewhere uh, who has uh, you know performed drama or whatever they see him on the screen the church said ah, this is evil these are the people these are the last days and look at them bringing the picture on the screen like that and whatever they're doing somewhere they can do that in your sitting room the church said no 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 we're not going to use that and then later they woke up and they are not using the television later and you know all these things came in the internet internet came in and social media came in and there are some people that said no as it was so it shall be and so it shall forever be we're not going to that is worldliness we're not going to use social media we're not going to use all this uh, internet we're not going to use this and that they said no 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 this these are the people of the world and they're going from wars to wars but now the church is waking up and we we'll see that that thing is to spread the gospel that thing is to make the word of God get everywhere we will be wiser than the people of the world in Jesus name the Lord will wake us up and then the courage the courage under the tutelage under the learning of Paul the apostle we're going to get all that I see you are on faster a lot of some people, when the aeroplane came, uh, you know, they said they are not going to use aeroplane, and they were riding on horses. The bicycle have come, the bicycle has come, they don't want to use that, and they said, God has given us legs, and if God has given us legs, why are we going to be using bicycle? Motorcycle came, they said, no, no. They said, car came, they said, no. And then when the aeroplane came, they said, God has given us the land. He has not given us the space. And so, all those people who are using aeroplane, they said they are worldly. They said they are going to go to hell. I'm telling you what they said those days. But now, all those people, aeroplane has silenced them. And now, they can go anywhere. The same thing. Why are you the late comer? Why are you the one that will be the last to use all these things that people are using to make the world worse? We're going to rise up. Amen. Somebody there, we're going to rise up. Amen. Anything at the disposal of the people that are doing evil, we're going to take it away from them. And we're going to use it for the propagation of the gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. Let your no, no, no be changed to yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Number three now, we're looking at number three, continuation in life's defining standard. We're looking at uh, for Second Timothy, we're looking at chapter 3, verse 14. It says in Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse 14, but continue. You've started something good, continue. The problem with dropouts is that they start their education. They don't continue. The problem with those who are not able to succeed is that they lay the foundation, but they are not able to continue. And we see many uncompleted buildings around us. That building, they started it seven years ago. They abandoned it and they have gone to another thing. And that project, they started it about, um, you know, five years ago. They have abandoned that. The people who start but don't continue, those people never have any, any definite standard or any definite achievement in life. But the word for you, if you're going to succeed, and I see successful people before me, I see achievers before me. I see the people that are climbing and the devil will not be able 
to bring you down. There is one word you must hold on in your life. Continue, but continue thou in the things which thou hast planned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learnt them. I come to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at profitable concentration on life's distilling scripture. We're reading from 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, and that from a child that was known the holy scriptures, which are able to make them wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Then in verse 16, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Then in verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, as we concentrate on the scriptures, what is the provision of the scripture for us? What's the power in the scripture for us? And what is the possession we have through the scriptures? Number one, salvation and eternal life. We have salvation and eternal life. In John chapter 5, verse 39, search the scriptures for in them you think he has eternal life and they are they that testify of me that's what we have in the scriptures we open the scriptures we observe the scriptures we study the scriptures we learn from the scriptures and we take in all the provision of the scripture and we have salvation we have eternal life number two we have life support in first peter chapter 2 reading from verse 2 it says that we should desire the sincere milk of the word that we would grow thereby the watch of God that's your life support as you eat that every day and as you read that every day as you meditate on that every day as you take in that every day and you take the watch of God more than your necessary food that's how you're going to have that life support Acts chapter 20 verse 32 talks about the watch of God it says I commend you to God and to his word because that word is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. Number three, a spiritual food. A spiritual food, the milk of the word is there and then the food, the meal is there in Matthew chapter 4 reading from verse 4 and Jesus answered and said, my shall not live by bread alone but by every word every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God like you feed your body that you nourish your body like you take care of your body with the watch of God the same thing you'll take care of your soul you'll take care of your spirit by the word of God in Job chapter 23 reading from verse 12 Job chapter 23 verse 12 neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips? I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. I prize, I exalt, I, I see that my soul is more important than my body. My spirit is more important than my body. And if I feed my body regularly and daily, how I must feed my soul and my spirit with the words of God. God. Number four is the heavenly light. Heavenly light, you see the world is dark and if we're going to walk through life, we need the light of the word of God. And in Psalm 119 verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's the benefit of looking at that word, benefiting from that word in verse 130, that is verse 130, it says the entrance of thy words 
giveth light. The entrance, it enters my ear. That's not, in, that's not enough. It must enter into my heart, and that's not enough. It must now spread and permeate every area of my life. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding on to the simple. Number five, this is the pilgrim's guide. The pilgrim's guide. When we journey to heaven and we're pilgrims on our way to heaven and it is this word that will guide us in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 20 and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the word of and the water of affliction yet shall he not shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore but thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Give me a good amen. amen. In verse 21, verse 21, and it says, Thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way. Walk ye therein. When ye turn to the right hand or to the left hand, you'll hear this is the way. And the word of God will guide you. And then number six, this is the word that gives us dynamic faith. Mountain moving faith. It says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17, it tells us very clearly they're hearing, God, hearing faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You are hearing that word and you are believing that word and you are reading that word and you are analyzing, applying, personalizing that word of God in your life. That word will bring faith, dynamic faith in your life in Jesus' name. And then in Ephesians chapter 6, reading from verse 16, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16, above all, above all. Any other thing you do, let it come below this one. Above all, this is the priority of your life. Above all, taking the shield of faith where we, ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Number seven, it gives us a lively hope. A lively hope. It tells us in Romans chapter 15, reading from verse 4, and whatsoever things were written aforetime, all the things that have been written down in the word of God, whatsoever things were written aforetime, they are written, uh, they are written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You have hope in Jesus' name. And then number eight is fervent love. It is this word that will show us how to love God with all our heart and with all our mind and with all our soul and with all our strength that we may live. It is this word that will show us how to love our neighbors, every neighbor as we love ourselves. Look at First Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned, unfeigned love, unpretended love, and to a love that is sincere and that is real, unfeigned love of the brethren, and see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Why? How? In verse 23, it says, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever, lively hope, and then fervent love, and deep abiding peace. What gives us peace? Peace in our soul, and peace in our heart, and peace in our life, and peace in the ministry. It is the word of God. In Isaiah chapter 48, reading from verse 18, oh, that thou art hearkened to my commandments, then at thy peace be as a river and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea and then it gives us supernatural strength you'll be strong 
I said you'll be strong. It tells us in first John chapter 2, reading from verse 14. John chapter 2, reading from verse 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that he is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong. Ye are strong. Amen. Any strong person there today? You are strong. Amen. But you notice uh, sometimes when you have not eaten for some time, how weak you are, and it appears you cannot even move or take a step, and then you take a good meal, and all of a sudden strength comes. The same thing with the Word of God. When the Word of God has been absent for some time, and you have not nourished your soul, your heart, for the Word of God, how weak you are, but then the Word of God comes, you are enlightened, and then there's something on the inside, energy, divine power enters into you, and nothing can conquer you again. It says he is strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. I have overcome. Then number 11, healing and health. Healing and health. In Psalm 107 verse 20, it says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Number 12, unlimited power. Unlimited power. I said unlimited power. That power is now available for you. The word of God comes to you and it enters your heart and power unlimited, power unfailing, power you will come into your life in Jesus name Isaiah chapter 55 we're looking at verse 11 Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 so shall my word be that went forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I have sent it. The word of God will prosper in your life, Amen. in your family, Amen. in your ministry, Amen. in your church, Amen. in all your endeavors. The word of God will lift you up and you'll never be under the billows of the storm in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's round up with Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm looking at verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 1, we're looking at verse 7. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Say good amen. amen. Verse 8, in verse 8, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Another amen. amen. Verse 9, in verse 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. The Lord touched your mouth. Yeah. The Lord touched your tongue. Yeah. The Lord touched your lips. He touched my mouth and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my word in thy mouth. I have put my word in their mouth. Look at verse 17 there. In verse 17, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 17, Therefore, thou gird up thy loins. Arise, speak unto them all that I command thee. All that I command thee. Verse 18 now. In verse 18, For behold, I have made thee I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar 
and he and praising words against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, against the people of the land. And then in verse 19, verse 19, this is mine. I said, this is mine. What are you? Say, this is mine. This is mine. They shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. Everywhere you go, everyone you touch, any territory, any, any, any community, anywhere, no matter what powers are there, the word of God is in your mouth, the power of the Lord is there inside you. Greater I see that is in you than he that is in the world. You go out now and you go and succeed. Rise up and let us pray unto the Lord. Go out and go and succeed. You go out in the power of the Lord. You go out for the word. The Lord had given you in particular. The past is gone. You are not looking at the things which are seen. You are looking at the things which are not seen. You are not looking at the negative prophecies and the negative predictions. You are looking at the, at the positive, practical, powerful prophecies for these last days. You receive the Holy Ghost and the power of the Lord will be for you, will be you and will walk through you all through your life. Dedicate yourself to the Lord now and all the things that frightened you before. You say you are not frightened anymore. You are not fearful anymore because the word of God has now strengthened you, encouraged you, enlightened you, empowered you and you will succeed in Jesus Jesus name father we thank you today we bless your name because every brother every sister is precious in your sight and there is an assignment there is a work you have given everyone to do that no other person can do i pray for every brother i pray for every sister i pray for every minister i pray for every preacher i pray for every professional what god has assigned you to do another person will not take it out of your hand that that the lord has ordained for you you will succeed in it in jesus name the word of god be in your heart the word of god be in your mouth and the power of god be in your life and the holy spirit envelop you energize you empower you and strengthen you and you go out in the strength of the lord and success is reaching before you achievement is reaching before you victory is reaching before you and all the remembrance of the failure of the past everything is gone master careth not thou that will perish you will not perish. Amen. You will not fail. Amen. The master is still in the boat and he rises up today and in your life he said, peace be still. There will be peace in your life. Amen. Hope in your life. Amen. Faith in your life. Amen. And power in your life. Amen. And the things that put your back to the world before, those things will not defeat you anymore. Like Goliath, is standing and before anyone little david anointed david go and conquer every goliath everywhere you are no more a grasshopper you are a giant in the faith go rise up in this strength and prevail in this land anywhere you are the lord give you that prevailing power and the lord put the smile, the joy, the laughter of a successful achiever in your life. Amen. Problems solved. Amen. Mountains moved. Amen. Sicknesses removed. Amen. And courage established in your life. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. For me, it is done. For you, it is done. Success all the way through. Amen. In Jesus' name.